Hello there, it's Myrna Loy from Black Bright News, which can be found at www.issueissuu.com forward slash Black Bright News. Now today's topic is about racism. And I'm talking about racism because a lot of people do not understand it, um, especially non-blacks. And a lot of times it's just thrown out there and it needs to be addressed. When you use the word racism, a lot of times people start getting defensive, especially white people. They get defensive when you use the word racism. Now, I'm not talking about the overt racists like the Ku Klux Klan and the BFA and all of those people that are overtly racist and dangerous people. I'm talking about the average person who doesn't even realize what racism is, whether or not they're racist, and what it is to be a racist. Now, when you're thinking about people who have not been educated about race or culture, you get people like the police force, you get lawyers, you get teachers, none of them have had any education on racism. You know, they go up those ranks and they don't have any knowledge about cultural diversity. They don't have any knowledge about the true history. And so it's all perpetuated and it's perpetuated in a way that people don't really understand or acknowledge. Now, um, the implicit racists are the ones that do not realise they are racist and they get very defensive if you say, oh, that's racist or you're a racist or and a lot of times when it's not intentional racism, you know, it's something that is kind of inherent in them and they don't realise. Say, for example, um, when you choose to buy a house, like for me, I, I happened to buy a house about 10 years ago. And I bought it on a street um, that, and I bought it because it was on a regular street as far as I was concerned. It needed work. It was in my price range. It was a probate house, which meant somebody had died there and the house had gone up and they were just trying to get rid of it. So I bought this house. Anyway, I didn't realise I was the only black person on the street when I bought that house. Now, the street itself, it's not like I'm going to walk down the street and think, oh, this is a black neighbourhood or this is a white neighbourhood. It's just a, it's just a street with houses on it. But you'll find a lot of people, they will define a street based on who lives on it. If a black person moves in, all of a sudden the tone of the street has gone down. If a black person, if more than one black person lives in there, they reckon it's taking the house price is going to go down. It's dangerous. They're probably dealing drugs and goodness knows what else. My experience when I moved into that house was that I had a next door neighbour who lived by himself. And he he reckoned to me that he had two pit bulls and he was going to set them on me. He also said I wouldn't be able to sleep because he's a DJ and he plays music all night. Fortunately, I'm a DJ as well. So I just said to him, well, look, I'm a DJ as well. So we can have a clash, a sound clash. You know what I mean? When you play your music, I play mine. And I made light of it. My point is, is that I could have felt really intimidated. And as a female living alone, I must say I was concerned at first. As I thought hey, he could do anything. I don't know. Anyway, as the years went by um, and he got to know me, I don't even know how we broke that barrier. Maybe it's just time. But he would take my bin out when I wasn't there. If I was not, if I was on holiday, he'd put my bin out, he'd put it back. He even knocked on my door and asked me for something and I could found myself, I could ask him for something. So he originally was being racist to me because he called me some names and whatnot. And then I, it was obviously based out of fear or lack of understanding or lack of knowledge. And that's what I'm saying. You've got some people who are racist and it's based out of fear. Some people just do are fearful, even in the presence of a black person. The black person doesn't even have to do anything just to be around them. They're scared. 
So we have to break this down in levels and wonder why that racism exists. And it is because of miseducation. Because if you went all the way back, black people have existed before time. And black people weren't always slaves. They weren't always, you know, at the bottom of the barrel, like people are made to think they are now, as though we're less deserving. At some point, black people were very prominent. But that history is wiped out of the history books. And as a result, white people assume that black people are less because that is how they've been educated. They've been educated to... Um, to believe that black people are the enemy, that we're, you know, that we're angry, that we're aggressive, that we're out to get you, you know, that there's some underlying thing, something, something animalistic about us. And when people don't learn the truth and they don't know the truth and they're, they, um, they're reliant on mainstream education, they are going to have that racism that's embedded in them that they don't even realize they have. Some people will say, oh, I'm not a racist. I've got black friends. I'm not a racist. I've got a black neighbor. I'm not a racist. I go down the road with um, so and so and, I'm, and I don't mind being around black people. But that doesn't mean that there's no inherent racism in you because by virtue of being white and being raised in a society where blacks where blacks are seen as inferior and whites are seen as superior, it's 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 going to it's going to happen naturally inside a white person's psyche. Now, when you think about Jackie Robinson, they reckon he broke the color bar, but did he really break the color bar, or was it that white people saw him saw his potential and knew that he could be well make the money? I guess. And so they allowed him to go on the pitch. Now, can you imagine if Jackie Robinson had just walked on that pitch by himself? Can you imagine? Do you think that he would have been allowed? The police would have been there. Everybody would have been there. They would have been on him like white on rice. So he didn't break the colour bar. He was allowed. And that is what has happened. Black people are being allowed into the human race because... Over time, they have found, they have seen the benefits of having black people on board. But if, they'd ha if a lot of them had had their way, we would have been right back there in slavery if we hadn't done something about it. Or if our ancestors and those freedom fighters hadn't done something to free us from slavery. So you have to, with that background and with the background of people being racially illiterate and not knowing anything about racism and, and using it because they're just fearful of what they don't know. You know, there's nothing better to get rid of fear than facing it. Why not? You know, if you're afraid of a particular black person, why don't you just go and talk to them and see what it is that you're afraid of? See if it's justified. Because a lot of people who look fearful and who look angry and who look hostile, they're not. We're all the same in the same skin. We've just got different shades and tones. It's like you've got different cars. You've got different color cars, haven't you? Same people with the human race. You've got different color people. It's not a big deal. So I don't know why it's made a big deal. And I don't know why you have people in power who keep perpetuating the myth that black people are undeserving and do not deserve to be treated equally, even now in 2018. It's just not right and it's not necessary. And the only reason they do that is because they're fearful. And what are they fearful of? Tell me, what are you fearful of? I haven't got a clue. All we do is come here, we work, we do the same things you do. So what is there to be afraid of? We've obviously proved that in a lot of things we're better at sports, we're better at, um, well, mostly sports, really. But, you know, in a lot of ways, black people do, red, I mean, when you think about Usain Bolt, I mean, and Serena Williams and Tiger Woods, they reign supreme. 
So is it fear of the, of black people being better than white people? Is that the fear? Is that the reason why we're constantly being put down and made to feel that we're not good enough? Every time we go to do something, we're stopped. We're prevented from getting in the workplace. Thank God for government. I think, uh, what's that guy? Aludu Equino. He was the first black person to get a British government job. But thank God, because at least when you've got a government job, you're on par with your colleagues, you're on par with your white person. There is no disparity. Everybody gets paid the same wage. Everybody gets treated the same. OK, you have some little innuendos within that, which is which, you know, you can't help people's the way people are. But the fact of the matter is that is the only place where you can more or less be treated with a degree of respect and like everybody else. So where am I going with this? I'm going with this because we have people in the police force who are who have this racism that either they're aware of or they're not aware of. They're in positions of power. They're in the position to stereotype. They're in the position to do things to black boys that is not that is not right. And it's based on their perception and it's based on their fears. And these people have not been trained on how to deal with individuals. I mean, supposing a guy's got Asperger's, a black guy's got Asperger's. What do the police know about that? They're not even medically trained. So if you see a guy with Asperger's who doesn't have, um, who is not good at taking instructions and he's in the hand of the police, what's going to happen to him? Police are unequipped. Over here, they, they killed Leon Briggs, was killed. He, he had a mental disorder. I don't know whether his was Asperger's, but they killed him. They choked him to death because they said he was he, he was um, resisting arrest. They hadn't got a clue about his men mental condition. And these people, they're not trained about mental conditions. They're not trained about cultural conditions. They're not con trained about racist conditions, racism or anything like that. And yet they're in positions to make decisions that affect us. And it's not right. You've got people all the way at the top making these decisions that affect us and they haven't got a clue about us, nor do they nor do they want to know. They can't be bothered to know. They've they have this old fashioned viewpoint that they cannot seem to get rid of. And it just keeps perpetuating itself. It perpetuates it perpetuates itself in so many ways. And so like, you know, until that neighbour that I had, until he spent that time with me, took about, I'd say about five, six years for him to kind of creep out and look around, saw that, you know, my house was looking better than his and saw that, you know, I wasn't bringing down the street, I, you know, I wasn't throwing rubbish out, you know, like they have all of these um, perceptions, you know, you have clean people and you have dirty people in all races but not because I'm black I'm going to bring down the neighborhood and have the place dirty and throw my rubbish out and all that kind of stuff that perception that people have and that's what needs to be changed people need to re-educate themselves they need to talk to people they need to go back and find the true history and understand why black people are the way they are remember Black people had everything, absolutely everything. They lived in a hot country. They had all the fruit, the food, the fish. They had all the, the oil, the, the, the minerals, the gold, the ivory, everything. And it's because white people got greedy. And they, you know, it wasn't enough just to steal it. They had to, you know, enslave people. And even through all of that, black people are still here and we're still willing to engage. We still interact. We're not, we, act, we, we should have, we should have a chip on our shoulder. We should be the one who are angry. We should be the one who are fearful. But instead, it's the other way around. And I think it's the other way around because deep down, there's this guilt that some white people have 
for doing us wrong. And then they don't trust us because they're thinking to themselves, oh my God, we did this, this and this. They must have it against us. Therefore, we have to keep them down because if we don't keep them down, they're going to get us. They're going to get they're going to get revenge. But black people are spiritual people deep down. We're not out for revenge. And once you realise that this is how it is, we're just one human race and we all everybody's entitled to human rights. Everybody's entitled to be treated with respect, with dignity, with fairness and with love. And that's all we're asking. And in a competitive world, yes, we'll compete. We will. We'll compete in sports and we'll compete in other areas. But we are not evil people. And you have to get that out of your head if we are to work together and become one human race of all colours. We don't want to be the race that the first black doctor, the first black scientist, the first this, the first that. As if, you know, that's a privilege. These are the first people that Britons acknowledged. It's not that they were the first. These are the first ones that the first policeman, these first soldier, whoever it is. These are the people that white people acknowledged and put in their books and started putting in their history books. And black people now have putting in their history books, but it goes way back. So we ha we do have a right to be treated with respect, just like anybody else. And that is all I'm saying. Ciao for now.